Hey guys, Tony here. Hope you're doing well. It's Saturday, February 23rd. Hope your weekend is going well and hope you're holding strong in this new asset class that is cryptocurrencies. I have some interesting news to share with you guys. First and foremost, this is not financial or investment advice. If you're not subscribed, hit that subscribe button. Also smash the like button. Now guys, we are seeing a pump on the weekend, which is interesting. Bitcoin is over 4100 at $4,128. Ethereum at $157. Uh, XRP close to 30 cents so across the board we are seeing green from a 24-hour perspective a great sign however um, I still want to let this rally that started earlier this week play itself out prove itself pump and dumps are easy in this market guys um, I'm cautiously optimistic I'm not in denial that this is the start of an actual rally I'm just saying let it prove itself um, I don't like to make quick decisions I've been burned personally in the past having seen th these type of activities and if it's the start of an actual rally bull rally guys this is great and I love it um, but like I said let it prove itself but great to see green on the weekends um, and let's see how this plays out now, speaking of Bitcoin, um, we have the Bitcoin lightning torch movement that's taking place. And essentially, it's a movement uh, that's gone semi-viral, and it's a movement to help folks to understand um, th that the lightning network or, or, or so is being enabled on different apps, and you can send uh, Bitcoin much faster. Um, essentially, the lightning networks improves Bitcoin's utility, its scalability, and so forth, right? Because let's be honest, let's be real now. Bitcoin as is, its utility sucks, right? The transactions per second, the scalability, the, 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 you know, it's it's really, really not that great compared to the other cryptos out there. And as what we saw in the bull run of 2017, guys, where the fees were ridiculous and it took hours, the, the network was clogged and it was ridiculous. So Lightning Network is going to solve that. Well, guys, Fidelity is involved here now in the, the passing of the Lightning Torch, the movement, right? And it's, like I said, it's gone semi-viral here. Here. So let me give you some details. Fid Fide oh, financial derivatives Fid giant Fidelity Investments received and passed the lightning uh, torch. L just like the Olympic torch, the lightning torch is being passed between members of the lightning network community. The trend first reportedly started when Twitter user and Bitcoin enthusiast Hodlnot sent 10,000 Satoshis, the smallest indivisible fractions of a Bitcoin to another Lightning user and the user added another 10,000 Satoshis and passed it on. Fidelity passed the torch to Harvard School Blockchain and Crypto Club in the wake of its upcoming dedicated conference. Previously, the torch famously was held by the 88-year-old grandma of a crypto enthusiast as well as Twitter CEO Jack Dorsey, who held it at the beginning of the current month. Uh, Jack Dorsey, if you recall, had mentioned that the Lightning Network will be eventually enabled on Square's app. So Jack is also the CEO of Square, the cash app. Um, so the Lightning Network is a protocol that works as a second layer on top of a blockchain. A large number of those in crypto in the cryptocurrency community have suggested a lightning network as a fix to Bitcoin scaling prob uh, problem. So this is a movement that's taking place. Um, I personally think it's great for Bitcoin because like I said, guys, the utility sucks um, as is. So the Lightning Network is going to solve a lot of its problem, but problems. But uh, it's the the idea is you have to get apps that are enabled with the Lightning Network. So, like for example, the Blue Wallet is one of the apps that are that is Lightning Network enabled. And as I said, Jack Dorsey said Square is going to enable uh, the Lightning Network on there. So here's Fidelity's tweets. They were um, passed. The torch was passed to them by. Wiz, which is a Bitcoin maximalist, um, and then they pass it to the Harvard uh, Crypto Club here. So interesting. We have a lot of uh, big, major, influential folks getting involved, and Fidelity Digital Assets is looking to launch March, guys. So we got some big things ahead for them, and as you know, right here, institutional solutions for a new asset class. So this is the future, guys. This is the disruptive technology, and I personally believe there will be multiple winners in the market. I believe Bitcoin will be around. It's going to be more of a store of value, a lot of the... Um, financial products like your ETFs, your futures, and so forth are going to be built around it. And um, let's hope the Lightning Network is able to scale globally and into multiple apps that it, it can actually help Bitcoin, which, you know, like I said, from a tech perspective and usability perspective is not that great. Right now, because there's limited transactions, it's, it works fine. 
But w- wait till the you know they we're in a bull run and more people are using it. That's why Lightning Network is so important. So, like I said, guys, the the uh, hashtag being used here is Lightning Torch, and it's being passed around. So let's see where this continues to go. And um, funny enough, somebody <laughs> mentioned that the Lightning Torch can't tip. Um, you know, kind of alluding to XRP Tip Bot, where you can tip um, and so forth. But you know, maybe they will add this feature eventually. But it's very interesting. Now, moving ahead, guys, a Texas crypto. Uh, fund and we're seeing more and more crypto funds we got we even yesterday we talked about the university of michigan endowment and pension funds and different hedge funds that are just starting uh, around crypto guys big money uh getting ready to come in uh they have unveiled two new ways to value bitcoin i thought this was interesting in a paper published this week tour demesters uh u.s crypto fund adamant capital uh suggests two new ways of determining the relative market value of bitcoin one measures investor sentiment. It's called relative unrealized profit slash loss ratio. Hodler position HPC is perhaps more interesting. Adamant finds HPC by measuring blockchain liveliness. This is interesting. They, they explain the concept as is. A blockchain where all the coins move within a single block has at, the, at that moment a liveliness of 100%. The blockchain of two years old with no new block rewards and where exactly one year ago all coins moved within a single block and no transactions moved since would have a liveliness of 50%. In other words, the measure fluctuates relative to the total lifespan of the blockchain. Uh, So this is interesting. And why am I sharing this with you guys? To show you that there is we are going to full mainstream the financial products as i just mentioned before are going to be built around crypto bitcoin uh, they most of them are going to start with bitcoin obviously um and they're going to look at new ways to analyze data and look at big data use artificial intelligence and um, a lot of the traditional marketing tools and and technology and apply to crypto so i hope you see where we're headed and as i've stated on this channel if you've been subscribed they're going to position this new asset class the same way the stock market is. It's going to be fully regulated, big money coming in and out, mass marketing. You're going to have your Wall Street corporate giants involved. They're going to have different products, crypto derivative trading, all kinds of stuff, guys. It's coming surely, uh, slowly but surely, and we just have to be patient. So I hope you guys see what is happening here. And these, these are not like, you know, little like mom and pop shop type activity here. This is big uh funds vcs uh, hedge funds wall street firms guys it's all happening speaking of big investment firm uh firms panthera capital ceo said this crypto winter is different than any we've seen before and it's true it's been the longest um but there's so much more building and so much more news and and progress being made because you you have the big players setting up services and shop. So he said, I would admit that the previous crypto winter of 2014 to 2015, I had more of a worry in the pit of my stomach. And I would have been worried back then too, even in late 2016 when I got in, even to early 2017, we didn't have this type of news. Um, And he said, was blockchain really going to work? Would it succumb to some of the real obvious regulatory risks that existed at the time? Today, the underlying fundamentals are much, much stronger. Now, recently, I reported on this. They launched a, a, their third crypto fund, guys, and, and they raised $125 million. They're hoping to close $175. So they're $50 million away. So I hope you see what's happening here. And these guys are getting more and more bullish because they see uh, now the technology is proving itself. It's, it's you know, uh, make, we're making progress. We're getting utility. We're getting different use cases being built out. And he added in 2018, they did $19 billion of uh, ICOs and only $4 billion of venture. I think 2019 is going to be the opposite. Venture is going to be much bigger than ICOs, not a pendulum swung back to venture. Um, so the big money, these fir- firms and funds and so forth, guys, it's they're getting the money. I mean, the money's coming in. Here's the facts, right? This is not, you know, you know, if we weren't getting this news and it was just me and other crypto YouTubers just saying, yeah, hold on to your crypto, you know, this is going to happen. But there was no news to actually show you tangible results of, okay, who's getting involved, who's doing what, then you can be like, yeah, 
dude, whatever, man. Like, uh, I don't know about this, right? But the writing is on the wall. The facts are here. This is why I try to share this with you. Um, and it, there's so much money being dumped into these funds and getting ready to put them into the market. So uh, we've also seen a lot of the OTC market activity over the counter trading has increased uh, from Circle to Cumberland. They all release uh, uh, statements saying year over year growth. So smart money is moving and, and setting up shop, guys. Now, finally, shout out to the user Chris Crypto Furson, uh, who tweeted the following and in, in, in uh, tagged me in it. Said in the tiny rural village of Mei De Tong, uh, I hope I pronounced that correctly, in northern Thailand, you can buy coffee, food, and lodging with Bitcoin and other cryptos at the Bitcoin Cafe. This is pretty cool. Look at, I mean, this this is almost like in the middle of nowhere, guys. I mean, it's like in a field. Um, but this is so cool. They're accepting multiple cryptos. The Bitcoin Cafe. This is awesome. Um, and this is where we're headed crypto is going to become the norm and what we're starting to see is bitcoin atm machines pop up everywhere um i shouldn't say just bitcoin atm machines it's other cryptos as well that you can buy some uh they usually have the top three like your bitcoin ethereum and litecoin uh but then some have xrp as well so it's slowly but surely happening creeping into society mainstream into our lives and people are going to become more educated. So thank you, Chris, for sharing this. Um, it's great to see out of you know different places. Here is where this is happening. I mean, you expect it like in a city, but wow, um, the movement is happening, guys. The future is bright. And uh, I would love to hear what you guys think about this news. Leave your thoughts and comments below. Thumbs up if you like this video. Please subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, thank you for your support. If you would like to support the channel by tipping or whatever it is, check out my Patreon group link in the description. Thank you for your support. And I'll talk to you guys later.